In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church. Today we observe the second Sunday of Lent. This Sunday is important because always on the second Sunday of Lent, we hear in the Gospel the account of the transfiguration of Jesus on Mount Tabor, which we will hear today in the Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus shows us his glory and reminds us that we are all called to glory. Although we must follow him through his cross, we will indeed share his resurrection and his glory in the Father's kingdom. Let us prepare now to meet with Christ in this Eucharist as we first of all acknowledge our sins and as we ask God for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know how how devoted you are to God since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked out, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars in the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessings. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, every year on the second Sunday of Lent, the gospel describes the miracle of the transfiguration of Jesus. And whether we're reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew, Mark, or Luke, all three evangelists have recording have recorded this miracle. Their details may vary a little bit, but, but all three of them tell us that Jesus took three of his apostles, Peter, James, and John, up on a high mountain, and there before their eyes he was transfigured. Now, St. Mark tells us that Jesus' appearance changed and that his clothes became dazzlingly white. But all three evangelists tell us also that Moses and Elijah from the Old Testament appeared with Jesus, and they were conversing with each other. We're also told that this scene was so incredible for the three apostles, and Peter said something about building three tents for them because they were so uh, frightened of what was happening. Then a voice came from the cloud that covered them. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The presence of Moses and Elijah in in the vision serves as a link to the Jewish law and prophecy. Moses was important, of course, to the Jews because he was, it was believed that he gave the Jews their basic law in the Torah. And Elijah was considered the greatest of the prophets of the Old Testament. So both Moses and Elijah present their presence, connect Jesus to Judaism, and the Old Covenant, establishing a, a divinely authorized continuity between the Old Testament and the New Testament Jesus came to establish. 
Now, the first time that we hear in the gospel the voice of God the Father is at Jesus' baptism when the Father speaks to Jesus directly. Here at the Transfiguration, we hear the Father's voice again, and the Father is speaking to Peter, James, and John about Jesus and to confirm Jesus' true identity. Now, each of the synoptic gospels, in each one of them, the, the Transfiguration takes place after Jesus tells his disciples about his coming passion and death. And the disciples were horrified to hear this because they couldn't, they couldn't even get to understand that this would ever happen to, to Jesus. So Jesus allowed Peter, James, and John to witness this transfiguration to help them understand and to help them accept his passion, death, and ultimately his resurrection, which will follow. And St. Mark tells us that they, as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus told them not to say anything about what they had just seen, not until Jesus rose from the dead. And at the time, well, they had no idea what that meant. However, this miracle would be key in helping the disciples embrace Jesus' death, and even more so, his resurrection. So the transfiguration gave the disciples a, a momentary glimpse, you could say, of the glory of heaven, and it helped them realize that Jesus was not only, just the, not only the Messiah, but he was also the Son of God. He was divine. So this time of Lent for us is also a time to reaffirm our faith in Jesus and that he is our Messiah. But we can only accept a Messiah if we recognize that we are sinners and that we are in need of saving. But Jesus has come. He has come to save us from our sinful ways and to turn us back to the Father who says, this is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Please join me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. To use the words of Peter, it is good that we are here in the presence of our transfigured Lord to pray together. So let us pray together for the needs of all people. That our transfigured Lord may guide and inspire us to transfigure our church to give greater witness to God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all fight injustice and racism and violence and aggression working to transform our nation into one justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have health conditions that are painful, terminal, or difficult to treat, that their suffering may be transfigured by the Lord's presence in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elect and all who are preparing for the Easter sacraments, that they may always remember to listen to the voice of the Lord in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, all those whose lives are threatened or made difficult by extreme storms and temperatures of winter, that the Lord may watch over them and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and for those intentions enrolled in our community book of prayer. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that the power and love of God brings them to their eternal home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all souls in purgatory and all of our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of mercy and compassion, you stayed the hand of Abraham and you reassured the terrified disciples. May we heed your words as you hear our prayers, which we make through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, Father, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo Thomas and Gregory Gordon, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all the souls in purgatory, and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Saint Joseph, your, your beloved, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For his kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still here on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for celebrating this Mass today on this second Sunday of Lent. Thank you to all of our ministers, as always, to, to uh, Tr- uh, Teresa for being our, our lector, for Mikhail for managing our cameras, to David and Eva for, for lifting us up so beautifully in music. As we journey through this Lenten season, let us always be reminded that this is a time to draw closer to Christ through the disciplines of this season. Let us always have that in mind, that Jesus was sent to us, and that we listen to the words of the Father. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him, and may we do so throughout this entire season of Lent and beyond. So let us go forth now with God's grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless your faithful people, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.